here at New Egypt, New Jersey, the Elks Lodge for a comic book convention. I had for what's the name of it? What's New the name Egypt. Of this one? The New Egypt Comic Book Con? Yes. Okay. We believe we have been here before. We think we might have been, yeah, but we sure. don't remember. Brian is looking for another Skate Man number one. He wants to hold the record. Of course. And he's looking for Fantastic Four number one because he's going to buy that for me. Uh, of course. Because we're so popular, people recognize us now. <laughs> we'll see you inside. <laughs> So as you see, we returned to New Egypt Collectible and Comic Book Con. Yeah. We had forgotten we had been there before. A year before. A year before. Mm -hmm. You could check out our one from a year ago. Mm -hmm. The Elk in Front was the giveaway for us that we had been there before. Yeah. And we had success again at this one like we did last time. We bought some key issues, so when yeah. we go through what we got... Stay tuned. I got a couple of big books here. Mm -hmm. But one of the cooler things was when we were going into the convention, somebody, one of our subscribers, recognized us as yeah. we were getting out of the car. Yeah, and, and I was so flabbergasted, I forgot to ask him his name. We should have taken a picture with him, too. We should have. I just, I completely blanked. It was the first time yeah. I think we've ever been recognized, not by a vendor. No, or, not by someone that we know, yeah, that yeah, we've known yeah. before, that knows mm -hmm. us before yeah. they know our videos. It's the first time we were recognized by someone who actually actively watches us without us 
kind of making them yeah, watch yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was an odd out there experience. We to watch. Yeah. So if you're the person that we saw when we were walking, and I, mm -hmm. I know you watched it, you, you said you watched all the videos, please email us at collectorsconfessions at gmail.com. We just, we want to send you something as a thanks. It, it yeah. made our day, mm -hmm. made us, you know, feel that what we're doing here is worth doing here. Yeah. We like to hear that people actually watch us, that we don't sure. force to watch us. <laughs> so let's talk about the convention. It's set up perfectly outside. Yep, within inside. The inside Island. Outside is all comic books. Inside is all toys, toys and, and other collectibles. Mm -hmm. And they had tons of both, and the prices were absolutely fantastic. Excellent. I mean, we saw a lot of Star Wars stuff. Yeah. Old yeah. stuff. Yeah. A lot of new original stuff. figures. They weren't in packages, but... They were, um, and herein mm -hmm. is my first problem, my first issue. As we know, I often have issues. If you have stuff selling at a convention like that, price them. Yeah, don't. Yeah, don't make people ask what the price is. I, I shouldn't have. To look, I shouldn't look through a bin of Star Wars figures and none of them have price on it, and then be told that they're anywhere from five to twenty-five dollars. Right. Yeah. I'm not going to waste my time looking at them. Whereas if you had the Mark Five, Ten, I would have probably bought two or three of them at least. Yeah. I just I, I like same thing with comic books. Mm -hmm. If the comic books aren't in dollar bins or in uh, more expensive bins, not labeled, I'm not going to ask ten times. Well, how much is this? How much is it? How? It's it's yeah. annoying for me. It's annoying for you because we both buy so much stuff yeah. usually when we go. Yes, but that that's a hassle. It's it, a hassle. It, it eats up a lot of time. And I've been buying Star Wars figures, and there was a ton, but there was no prices on them. And I mm. certainly would have bought, you know. A couple of them, a couple of the ones that I need, I saw in that bin. So please, vendors, price your stuff. Don't mm -hmm. leave your stuff unpriced. Yeah. We also saw some of our friends there. Yeah. We Greg, saw Greg, Greg the Ghoul. Greg the Ghoul, who you can mm -hmm. check out the interview with him, and you can check out his two two episodes about his stores. He runs Phantasm Comics and Nukem Comics. Yep. And we ran into John, who runs the One Day Comic Expo. Yep. We just and we did a lot mm -hmm. of chatting too. We, and uh, John's brother was there as yeah. a writer of a comic. And we talked to John's dad for a while, yeah. who mm -hmm. was very nice. We I've still met at another convention recently. Great guys. If you're looking for a really good convention, New Egypt is great. Yeah. One Day Comic Expo is one of the better ones we've been to. Uh, Brian spent some time looking at Godzilla figures. Yeah, oh, those were nice. I like those. Well, you didn't buy any, though. I didn't buy any, because I have a lot of Godzilla stuff right now. Okay. And no place to put any You're new stuff, really. overloaded with Godzilla stuff? I do have a lot of Godzilla You looked at some horror well, stuff? Yeah, there was a lot of good horror stuff. The Freddy... What are they called? The muscle... The He-Man oh, Freddy, uh, I call the him? Savage Age, yeah. Freddy Krueger, they had him. They, mm -hmm. You don't see that either? You didn't buy that either? Because I had already bought all the comics. Oh, I okay. Bought. I was out of money yeah, by the Brian, time I saw Brian, them. for the first time in the history of this show... Brian's stack is way bigger than my stack. Well, Greg from Newcomb and Phantasm had a lot of indies in yeah. dollar bins. Yeah. And you don't usually see that. No, you do not. So I, I managed so to get it, some So it was cool perfect stuff. for you. So you... Yeah. I, I mean, I've, seriously, this is the first time Brian's stack has ever, you know, mm -hmm. really... It might be double my stack this time. Yeah. But we looked at other stuff. Brian was looking at some classic Disney and Hanna-Barbera comics. Oh, yeah. Those Norman were nice. Those little Dell. Uh, we'll see if you bought any when we did go not. through your stack. I did not. No. And you, you, Brian walked around. I was going to Dobbins. Brian walked around and took some pictures. What was the transforming Ghostbuster thing that you saw? I have no idea what that was. I meant to look it up and I didn't, but it looked like a, a Volkswagen. Yeah, here's, here's what it looks like. Yeah, it pops up and there's like a monster inside that uh, extends it's, when you open it up. I've never seen that before. I, think, I don't know. I think it's a haunted thing from the Ghostbusters line. It probably is it's from a the haunted Ghostbusters vehicle. toy line, yeah. yeah. But I, I'm pretty unfamiliar with that real Ghostbusters uh, oh, me too. era I, of things. That, that falls right yeah. into that time when I wasn't really collecting you paying attention anything. To I wasn't yeah. paying attention to toys. Right. So I don't really know anything about it. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, we also saw a bunch of Batman stuff. Brian saw an alarm clock, which I happen to have I can't believe you had that. on That's my so funny. end table yeah. in my bedroom. It's been there. It was mm -hmm. the alarm clock I had when I was a kid. Yeah. And it woke me up for school every day. So I saw it at a um, flea market once and bought it. Mm -hmm. So it's been sitting there for a good, what, you know, seven or eight years. What year about is that from? Is 1978 that from? about. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Complete guess i believe it's from like that's when i had yeah, it. i was probably cool like looking, uh, five or six Robin. years old when mm -hmm. i had it i got it for christmas and no yeah i got it for christmas mm -hmm. and it sat there for years and then i rebought it nice we saw that mexican bootleg batman one batman yeah. which was really cool no price on it though so again no price we didn't buy it because yeah. there was no price on it if there's no price on it we're not gonna buy it mm. 
We also saw a Batman radio classic. Looks like it's from the 60s. Yeah. And mm -hmm. a Batman walkie-talkie. Right. But we didn't only see toys. Nope. We saw comics. Mm-hmm. Micronauts number eight. 9.6. And 9.6 was very expensive. Very expensive. Yeah. I got it. I got it very cheap, but it's not in good condition. But it's the first appearance of Captain Universe. Universe right. And it's the most expensive of the Micronaut series. It was the last one I got when I finished the original series. What did you do? Remember what you paid for it? it wasn't in a dollar bin. No, you paid. It might have been more. Than, it was probably around five bucks. Though, All right, that's it, not bad. It was, in, it was in rough condition. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd like to get a nicer one, but... Not a graded one, though. But not a graded one. 9.6 is, so is a great grade. Yeah. There was actually a lot of graded stuff there. I know a lot you of were flipping through. Stuff. Yeah. I, I don't buy graded, well, and I never would. One of the booths had graded comics for $35, two for 60 but they were in, like, the seven point whatever yeah. range. Right. There was also a Star Wars number seven, which is important because it was a 7.5 graded. Why was that one important? Oh, that's the first Star Wars story that is not based on the movie. It's the first, like, um, new Star Wars story in the comics. Uh, also, I believe it was illustrated by Howard Jacob. And it's my first Star Wars comic I ever bought. Right. When number I was a seven. Kid. Where Han and Chewie are, like... The cover, the cover just got... The cover honestly got me. The yeah, cover is it, what right? got me. I have it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I re-bought it mm -hmm. at a convention recently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's one of the first comics I bought when I was a kid. Yeah. And I absolutely... I love that comic. Yeah, it, it the cover. One. The cover is so cool. So, yeah. Yeah. we're 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 telling you, go to yeah next next year. Uh, they may do another one mm -hmm. this year, is what they were saying because it it's been going so well. Yeah, it's a really head nice out convention. to New Egypt. Small. It's got a lot of good stuff. Oh, a lot of good vendors. Prices are fantastic. Mm -hmm. So let's look and see what we got. Not only that, but when you walk in, they give you free comics. Free comics. You you didn't. Four. You, you didn't open yours. I, I did not mine open up. mine, so I'm going to open I already mine, opened mine for you guys to see what the free comics are. And it's not one, it's not two, but it's three free comics. Oh, Doctor Who comics number one. Mm, nice. I know who drew this cover just by looking at it. Who is that, Peach Momoko? That's Peach Momoko. Nice. There you go, Peach Momoko cover. Absolutely fantastic. Um, Avengers 55. Oh, it's Judgment Day. Crossover with Judgment Day. Sorry, Pretty cool. And Deathstroke 14. Three cool comics for free. Nice. Before I even... We, and it was only $5 to get in, so that's important. We've, mm -hmm. we've been really talking a lot about that. How much should it be to get into a small convention? Yep. $5 is perfect. And you're receiving like $15 in comics yeah, uh, on your right. way in. You're getting free comics on yep. the way in, so, so. Your, your $5 definitely went a long way already. Yep. And and that's not even talking about the deals that we saw yeah, there. Yeah, some really good. You got open yours? What were the, yeah, you want to see what I got yeah, for free? What were your free? What I got for free was Saber Two. Four. Three. It was Saber Tooth number three, which is from the Krakoa era of X Men. Um, oh, that's new. Yeah, it's relatively new. Uh, Hulk Ten, which uh, is a Donny uh, Cates issue, written by Donny Cates. That's Hulk number ten. And this is the one that I was really, I really liked actually. It's a, it's Life Zero. It's an indie comic. It, in America, it's published by uh, a company called Ablaze, uh, Ablaze Comics. I don't know them. It's a reprint actually of an Italian, uh, limited series. It's a zombie story. You read it already? Or? Uh, I read the first issue. Yep, and I really like it actually. It's got some really great art, and uh, it's about a, a team of special forces folks who have to go and rescue their captain from a prison and he's surrounded by the walking dead sounds interesting i like it how many you have any idea how many issues it ran it ran for six issues huh. and uh, actually i'm going to be looking, looking for, for uh, two through two, two through six there now. you go yep. see he hooked you with a free copy and got the guy me. who actually runs it his name is chad also so oh they kept everyone kept saying ask chad and i was like why are they asking me yeah. I, don't, I don't want i don't know <laughs> i don't know anything about that no it's a good convention it's a it's a really good like an old school yeah, very comic oriented. Yeah. Uh, reminded me of like the you know the Elks Lodge comic. Yeah, that's exactly. It's went to as a kid. That's exactly what I went to. Church basement where I got Faust number one. If you grew up in the seventies or eighties, you definitely attended a comic book show mm -hmm. or a baseball card show in the basement of a church. Yep. We still go to one here on Staten Island, St. Anne's. We go to that's every a good year. One. Yeah, yeah that's they're a good ramping one. that up right now. We've been I've been mm -hmm. chatting with the guy running it. So yeah, let's get into what our haul was, what we actually bought. Mm -hmm. Brian, you can start us off because you brought an entire run of something uh, magical. Almost a full, well, about half a run of the first volume. 
And let me grab a few of these here so I, I'm not always reaching to the side like I am in these videos. Trying to unprofessional. Very unprofessional. Actually, this is probably all right here, isn't it? Yep. Let's, let's, yeah, okay. So, uh, I know of, I've known of this series for a while, of course. I haven't bought any, but... I know nothing about this but, series. But, um... Greg, the ghoul from Newcomb, was selling a whole bunch of them. So I got all these issues of Next Men, starting with zero. And I got one. I got two. And it's John Byrne. I so got three. Mm -hmm. Famous for doing Superman and... Four. Alpha Flight. Five. I can keep naming things that John Byrne did if you want. Is this six? Canadian six. Dome, John Byrne, right? Uh-huh. Seven... Eight. Wow, that's a whole run. Now, how much were these Nine, each? Nine, a dollar. Dollar bin. Ten. Eleven. That's like almost a full run. Twelve? With a cool cover. I like that cover a lot. All John uh, Byrne wrote and yep. did the art. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Wow. Seventeen. And eighteen. So zero through eighteen. What does the series go up to? Uh, I believe the first volume went to 30. Oh, wow. So you don't, you don't have that many left to yeah, go. Yeah, but the big problem is number 21. Right. What's number 21? Like the Micronauts had that first appearance of Captain Universe number that eight? jacked up number 8, the price of it. Number 21 of Next Men features the first appearance of Hellboy in a an ongoing series. What does that mean? Because he appeared previously in Giveaway Comics... And an anthology, I believe. I'd have to look into it. But the history of Hellboy's first appearance is really a convoluted Sounds topic. like Brian should do a video on the history of Hellboy. Definitely sounds like maybe that's something worth looking into. Well, when, when he was buying it, Greg was telling us that the first appearance of Hellboy is in 21. And right. I was surprised because I know Hellboy is done by Mike Mignola. And I was wondering, why would Hellboy right. first appear in a John Byrne comic? So he was created by Mignola. He appeared in a giveaway at Comic-Con. And then he was in an anthology, and then he appeared in Next Men in his first Interesting. ongoing series. So are you actually going to try to get it? I'll see. It's pretty expensive online, actually. Yeah, but online is online. We, yeah. you, uh, we've noticed, too, at conventions lately, we've we've been doing this for quite a while. Mm -hmm. The prices really have started to go down. Oh, I, conventions? I have, yeah. yeah. I got oh, some. Yeah. I got a like a huge Fantastic Four key at this mm -hmm. convention that you'll see when I go to mine, and the mm -hmm. price was so low. I was shocked that yeah. how cheap it was. Yeah, that was yeah. That. So let's. I'll go through some of mine. Go. Okay, here goes some. some I'm gonna go hall. through my my DC first. So I'll look. We'll look at my DC. I, I love that, that top one right away. You know why I love it? Why do you love it? Because it's a Whitman. I love Whitman. Superman 331. Not only is it a Whitman, it's actually my first key. Mm -hmm. Brian doesn't look for keys. No. It's the first appearance of the Master Jailer. And nice. that's a Metalo appearance. Oh, cool. So, it's a Whitman. And if I see Whitmans and Dollar Bins, I pick them up. And here's one, but not only one. Here's two. Mm -hmm. Superman 332. Nice. Also a Whitman. Hopefully, at some point, I will have... All of them. Again, another vendor had some package Whitmans, but no price on them. Oh, I like those. The, yeah, they were in the bags. But they no were in the store, but no store. Yeah, but no price on it. DC Comics presents annual number three. Superman teams up with Shazam. I love that Savannah on the cover. Yeah, he's yeah. got Shazam's power in this one. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a big fan of DC Comics presents. And finally, hardware number eight. I've said this in a number of other videos. These milestone comics do not pop up a lot at conventions yeah so anytime i see one that i need i'm hoping to get all the runs i buy it so mm -hmm. there you go dollar bin picked it up nice all right my turn yep all right well this i got another full mini series also i believe from greg the ghoul uh this is a mini series called scratch never heard of it now i don't usually buy from the big two this is a dc comic but there's two reasons why I bought this. First and foremost, that was the complete mini series. It's a horror-oriented series, and it's illustrated by Sam Keith, who did and the Max, Batman. and I love the Max. So yeah, I got Scratch One, Two. I don't know that that series. Three, four, and five. Oh, so you have the whole series. Yep. The I'm whole assuming that, that Scratch. I suppose so. Yeah. You didn't read it yet. No, I haven't read any of this yet. Coming but soon. Just Brian look will... at look at the Sam Keith no, he's, style. He's another one that you can there. tell right away. Yeah, as soon as you look at it, you're like, oh, look at that. Coming yeah. soon from Brian, a video about Scratch. Review of Scratch. 
from DC Comics. So let's look at some of the indie pendants that I bought. Since we're going to buy it, your stack is so much bigger than mine. You're going to have to do a longer one this time. You think so? Yeah, you're going to have to do a longer... I'm going to be done by the time you're halfway finished. Yeah. The Futurians, number one. I didn't know anything about it. I will pick up issues of comic book publishers I don't know about. This was published by Lodestone Publishing, which is the vision of Deluxe Comics. I don't know. I don't know. It's from them. October 1985. I'm actually going to do some research and do a video about this Lodestone. Um, Dave Cockrum wrote and illustrated oh, this one. okay. And mm -hmm. they have a bunch of other comics that they do, and they were distributed through Sunrise Comics. So I'm going to do some research on this. Hopefully yeah, I'll be able to get in touch with some of the guys who ran the company mm -hmm. and try to get put together a story about uh, this Lodestone. I didn't, never heard of them, so I figured yeah, it'd be... They were Los Angeles-based yeah. distributor. I figured it'd be interesting to mm -hmm. do it. I also bought another one, never heard of, The Black Hood. This is by Red Circle. Nice. It's, you know, it looks like some vigilante story. I've bought in comics Red Circle before. They're yeah. the ones who did that New York street crime one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So... He looks like Phantomas, the original Phantomas from the movie. The uh, did you ever see that? No. Oh yeah, it's Italian action uh, film. Oh really? From the sixties. Yeah, yeah. Never heard of him. So yeah. Black Hood. Couldn't pass this in the dollar bin. This is key number two. This is the first appearance nice. of Ruben Flag. First appearance of American Flag by a very good friend of ours, <laughs> Howard Jakin. There you go, Howard there it Jakin. Is. American, American, American Flag. Flag number one. So I'm going to try to. I love that cover. Buy this whole entire series now. Mm -hmm. Another friend of ours, oh, yeah, yeah. Tony Fleeks. This is key number three. Stray Dogs number two. This is the fourth print. And apparently the fourth print, it's 48 Days Later cover, is the rarest of the prints. The nice. hardest one to get. Nice. So, you know, I'm I'm going to try to get the whole run of Stray Dogs. I saw that in one of the bins, and I thought it was a 28 Days Later yeah. comic. This, is, this yeah. was from Greg mm -hmm. DeGool also. Yeah. So, I'm, you know, Tony's... Did an interview with us. He was great. So you, I said, you know what? I'm going to start buying this. Do you know Danny Boyle's coming out with a third movie? Oh, really? 28 years later. I saw I just saw it. Yeah. I saw mm -hmm. it. Stray Dogs number four. Another one. This is based on that uh, Japanese movie. Oh, Audition. There you go. Yes, it looks like Audition. So oh, all the covers of Stray Dogs are based on old... Did you ever see Audition? No. Old oh. comic book. Old uh, movies. Old horror movies. And finally, the last one, Stray Dogs... Dog Days number one. This is key number four. This is the first appearance of Oliver the Beagle. Nice. So I there's my indies and all so, I have left. And is shout out to Tony Fleeks. Tony Fleeks. He did an interview with us. He's mm -hmm. great. I actually message him all the time. He just did a uh, did a story in a DC comic about the pet DC pets, the heroes. Nice. That was very good. Mm -hmm. So we always like to plug Tony. Mm -hmm. Should I go for a longer one? Go for a long one because okay. this is it for me. Brian topped me in the stack. This well, let's see. All right, this I'm going to put aside because it goes with something else in there. Uh, let's see. Let's. See. I get organized before I come on the show. I don't get organized. I don't Just prepare. Prof professional, unprofessional. No, no preparation from my. See, professional, unprofessional. No, no, I don't prepare. All right, so ready? So uh, I'm always looking at. Uh, I got a real nostalgic fondness for the. 90s yeah, they, you get happy every time you see one of them. I'm always pleased because they, they just bring me back to that era of like this insane notion of what comics yeah. were so I saw this and I got to grab it it's Death Blow number one and almost you, uh, you love those you, covers too I love these gimmick covers you can't even see the image on it though it's like black on black with the foil red cover so Death Blow number one by Jim Lee uh, Death Blow number two which has a much more uh, clear North cover North there. Cover. You can tell what's actually on it. Uh, and Death Blow number three. So I'll give a quick read to those and see what they're like. Maybe they're maybe they're a good time, right? It's 1990s yeah. image with Joe Hill, it's probably big muscles and yeah. You know the writer Joe Hill. Yeah, yeah. He he once said one of my favorite things about comics. He said the worst comic I ever read was still a pretty good time. There you go. Yeah. So uh, I picked this That's up. How we just, live our life. Yeah, just because I I it looked interesting. The new GI Combat. I'm not sure what year it's from, but I like these anthology series. Yeah. You know, and war and uh, horror stories. I always kind of. You really went all over the place this time. You had yeah, no focus yeah. at this one. No, I was really not focused. I was gr what I was doing was trying out new stuff to see if I'm going to follow. It, okay. You know, so crossover I grabbed. It's an image comic from Donny Cates and uh, um, uh, Jeff Shaw. 
So yeah, I, I have no idea what it's about, but the cover just that's issue me. number one. Number one. So yeah. There you go. Especially when it's yeah. an issue number one, it's hard, sure. it's hard for Brian to pass up something new. Uh, I like this character from way back when. Uh, I believe it was a gold key character. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, a long time ago. A long time ago. Uh, I got this is the dynamite reboot of Turok the Dinosaur Hunter. I got number one, and I got number two. Nice. Which I like these covers. They're cool. Um, yeah, Greg Pak is writing it. He's a good writer. I like Greg Pak, so why not? Uh, I grabbed this again because I like the cover a lot. Honor and Curse from Mad Cave. I don't know what this is. Uh, it looks like it might be some kind of supernatural samurai story, which uh, sounds promising. I don't know. What was that on the oh, back? I limited. never even noticed that. It's limited to only 500 copies. Oh, oh okay. Cool. Wow. Mad Cave lim mm -hmm. CBSI exclusive, so it's ex mm -hmm. it's a variant cover, is my guess. Yep. And limited to 500. This is 320. It's never been open. Oh, look at that. It's sealed since it I was. didn't even notice it. There you go. And a dollar bin, too. Dollar bin. Uh, I got Tales from the Dark Side number four. Because know anything related to Joe Hill, I will grab because I like his writing. Oh, he wrote that? He wrote this, uh, and it was uh, a kind of a tie in when they tried to reboot the show. The show? Okay. A few years back. I love Tales from the Dark Side. And then this was a free comic book day that I paid a dollar for. Well, whatever. Hey. Uh, stories from the Atlas Comics Library. These are horror stories, another anthology piece. I'm very curious to check this out. So, yeah, uh, Atlas used to run these old uh, horror comics yeah. in the 60s, 70s. Yeah. So, I check those out. Why not? Now, oh, this is put out by Fantagraphics, which uh, you're going to Seattle, which was one of the home bases of oh, really? Fantagraphics. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to Seattle. One of the old... Uh, Actually, the, when you're watching this, I'm probably in Seattle right yeah, now. Yeah, one of the most renowned uh, independent comic publishers ever. Really? Fantagraphics. Keep sure. going. Keep going? Yeah. Well, here, speaking of Seattle, here's uh, Hate. Peter Bagg's Hate, number 17, which is published by Fantagraphics. And uh, I was recently watching a video that was explaining why this is the Gen X comic. Uh, I've never actually read a full never issue. Heard of it. I'm going to check it out. Uh, it's it's a lot of like... Was it holding a mad ball? In yeah, he's holding a mad ball they found in the city dump. It's kind of a story about slackers and deadbeats in the 90s. Yeah, so... You? Sure. Speaking of slackers and deadbeats... I grabbed uh, Quick Stops number one. That was in the album? Yeah, with Blunt Man and Chronic right on the cover. There you go. Look at that. Little Jay and Bob. I wonder what their first appearance is in comics. I don't oh, know. Oh, it's written by Kevin Smith, too. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea what's in here, but. Interesting. Again, let's no. check it out. See no what idea it's like. it existed. Mm hmm. Uh, you want to go now? Yeah. So I'll go through my. Yeah, because I've only got I've only got okay. three I've only got three left. Now. Okay, I'll go through my DC yeah. pile and then you can finish up. Then I have some other things that I got outside of here. Uh -huh. So I bought some key Fantastic Four issues because the prices were so good I couldn't pass it pass up. The first one is Fantastic Four fifty six. This mm. is key number five. It's the second appearance of Claw and the second appearance of Silver Surfer. So this was it was like fifteen dollars for this. Which is great. It's in really good condition. Fifteen. Well, that's really good. Yeah. Because he gave me a deal. Because I bought, I bought a bunch of comics from him. So I bought yeah. this one from one the same vendor mm -hmm. that I bought the big key from. This is a huge key for me. This mm -hmm. is knocking out one of the big ones. Fantastic Four sixty seven, which is the first appearance of him, who later becomes Adam Warlock. We saw this in one of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies Sorry. before we saw mm -hmm. right before we saw him. It ended two and then three. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. the funny part about this is 75, right? The price on here is 75, 60, 50, <laughs> 50 on the back. So when I grab, I saw this one, one of the, this one of the first comments I saw when we got there, and I was like, oh, 50 bucks, that's a little, mm -hmm. but, but I'm like, that's a key book, 50 bucks for that is, and this is in good shape too. I was like, 50 bucks is a lot for this. But you know what, I'll, let's see, I'll go, to the, I'll go back towards the end. So I bought this one from him, this one and another one, and this wasn't 75, wasn't 60, wasn't 50. I got it for 40 bucks. Nice. That's a excellent. ridiculous price. That's excellent. But, you know, it's a good thing you're grabbing these Fantastic Fours now because with the announcement at San Diego Comic Con I know. of the movie. I'm worried. Yeah. This was the other one I bought, the three that I bought from him, big, big ones. This is key number seven. This is the second appearance of Psycho Man. Nice. It's issue number 76. So I bought three Fantastic Four. You know, low keys. Mm -hmm. 
Very nice. And it only it was they were cheap. The the two were fifteen and one was forty. So mm -hmm. like nothing. But I bought a bunch of other Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four number two eighty four. This is the Invisible Girl Becomes Invisible Woman. It's key number eight. It's funny because these are the other these I buy because I'm looking for the low numbers. Then I bought a bunch of other ones and they were actually in dollar bins that they were keys that I was I'm shocked when I was going through my thing that these were actually in dollar bins. And you'll see why when mm -hmm. I explain to you why. Like this one, it's a minor key. It's the first appearance of her as Invisible Woman. Not a big deal. Time out. Yeah. How what actually turns her from invisible girl to invisible is it a name change it's a name change or does something happen i don't know i have to read the issue because you know what i'm worried about oh what no i think she just it's, <laughs> it's time to call an invisible woman <laughs> okay and this is goes back to what brian this is john byrne yep old john byrne on yeah he did a lot of she hulk he does she -Hulk well he things. he's one of the guys who like, helped turn she hulk into like yeah. a fun she joins the fantastic yeah. four and mm -hmm. issue number 322 mm-hmm Issue number 328. Again, just ones I needed to fill in. Mm -hmm. Ones I was missing from my run. This is another key. No, the next one is another key, right? This is issue 345. Issue 346. This is key number nine. Mm -hmm. This is the first appearance of the TVA. Oh, really? In comics. Wow. And it was in a dollar bin. Well, that's a big deal. So, I don't know this when I buy it, but this is just one that I need in my run. I'm mm -hmm. almost done with the 300s. Yeah. And I'm like, holy cow, this one should not have been in the dollar bin at this point. The TVA is a huge part that's a big deal. of the MCU and in the Deadpool dollar bin. And yeah, a lot of things, yeah. 352, this is key number 10. This is the first appearance of Mobius and the Minutemen oh. and the second appearance of the TVA. Nice. In the dollar bin. So two Very keys nice. that... Most cases, this would have been way more than a dollar. Mm -hmm. These two together, the two first appearances of the TV and Mobius, who have become huge characters in the MCU. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes you never know what you're going to get in Dobbin. Mm -hmm. I didn't take as much time as I normally take in the Dobbins. I wasn't feeling that good on Sunday. And I'm disappointed. I'm kicking myself now because yeah. I found some really good things. And you, have, you had convention sickness. I had something. Yeah. Fantastic Four 389. Just some I need to fill in. Mm -hmm. Fantastic Four 396. Again, trying to fill in all the 300s. Fantastic Four 611. That's a great cover. It's a John Tyler Christopher cover. Mm -hmm. He does all the action yeah, covers. Yeah, I like but the he, cover. I love his cover. I love the coloring on this one. Yeah. How she's Invisible Woman is wearing pink. Fantastic Four 46. This is key number 11. This is the first appearance of Reed Richards' sister. Oh. Didn't know he had a sister. Me neither. Ultimatum number one. Don't know anything about this. Nice. But I will read it. Kirby. 2001 Space Odyssey, number two. Look at that Kirby cover. There is a... That, that's number two? This is number two. Okay. That is a legendary comic because of what he did with that. Oh, it's amazing. The cover. Yeah. Dollabin, too, I, which is hard for me to believe. I, anytime a Kirby's in a Dollabin, yeah. I'm, I'm shocked and I buy it every time. Because he basically rewrote the story. the story for his own... How perfect that is. To do his own thing. Oh, and he's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, this is great. If you don't know what 2001 Space Odyssey is, look at this trailer. Let's keep going. Captain America 292. This is key number 12. The first appearance of Black Crow. Not the Black Crows. Black Crow. That's Black Crow. <laughs> Doctor Strange number 78. Key number 13. Remember, I don't pick these to be keys, but there was a lot of keys and dollar bins here. Uh -huh. This is his first new costume. Nice. And the first appearance of Ecstasy. Nice. I don't know if that's a drug or a character. 
Uh, it's probably, probably a character. Who's, my last, on, who's on the drug? Yeah. yeah. My last two, Sensational She Hulk number one. He just hugs villains. And gets him. And the actual one. Variant cover. Nice. Actual one. So, there you go. That was my haul. Very, very light compared yeah, to Yeah, you, you went pretty tiny. Uh, I wasn't, went pretty wasn't feeling myself. But yeah, I've only got. Finish up. I've only got three left. Uh, this one I bought just because. I don't know. Something about the cover grabbed me. I think it's the Go Blue written on the guy's armor. This is called The Realm from Caliber Comics. Uh, I don't know Caliber, but I saw I Go know. Blue written on the thing, and I was like, this is probably a time travel story. It might be fun. I don't know. Let's okay. check it out. I have not opened it yet, but uh, Caliber, I've never heard. Well, Caliber, yeah, I have heard of, actually, now that I think of it. I think I've got a really good Garth Ennis alien story that, that he did okay. for Caliber. Uh, now these two, again, I don't usually buy Marvel in DC. I kind of pushed into that one. But I had to get these. They had a few covers of this one. All, they had almost all um, appearances. And for a, that was Greg, right? For yeah, a dollar. Yeah. And you can't beat those for this a dollar. This is an 100-page anthology celebrating the Joker's 80th anniversary. You can't beat that. And they had a bunch of really good covers. I chose this cover because it was really the one I liked the most. Um, love it. Love this cover. It's great. It's a bunch of original stories created created just for this the back to is cool yeah just for this issue yeah it's an anthology by a bunch of different creators a lot of good stuff in well here. dc's been doing with their characters mm -hmm. when they hit that the 80th they do one for everyone that's the everyone next one has too one. and again like i said i don't usually buy but i, I saw have the this flash superman for, batman for a dollar green lantern 80th anniversary yeah, anthology this is awesome for it, a dollar it starts with uh, an alan scott story that is really really good and uh yeah so it's again Original stories put together just for this anthology. Yeah, and it, for a buck, you can't beat that. $1, 100 that's, pages of comics. That's everything we got from the convention. Yeah. I have some other things that I got since the convention. Uh, oh my God, really? Yeah. San Diego so Comic Con post, Pass. This is post convention. San Diego Comic Con Pass, and we were not invited again. <coughs> we're trying to figure out how we're going to get ourselves invited. The invite was probably lost in the mail. We lost okay. in the mail this year. San Diego yeah. Comic Con, we're waiting yeah. for you to invite us. I we think, forgive you. I think we can make a really good show at San Diego Comic Con. So I bought something from McFarlane. Here's the box. Mm -hmm. It's the Superpower set. Oh, wow. Look so at they had some that. extra, and he had it up online for a little while. So I was like, you know what? Wow. I'm I'm buying the superpowers figures, so I'm gonna pick this up. The figures are they're the regular figures, but they're in black and gold. Oh. So I was like, eh. Are you gonna open it? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> I'm probably gonna open it and display the figures, is what my plan is. Wow. I also bought a couple of comics. Um I like the free giveaways. Mm -hmm. So I picked up the Red Bulls last weekend, had a free giveaway. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um I reached out to them multiple times. The Red Bulls never got back to me. I ended up having to buy this on eBay. Thanks, Red Bulls, for contacting me, letting me know how I could get one since I couldn't go to the game. Mm. Appreciated. And I also bought another giveaway comic, which is, I don't know how old it is. It's uh, Minor League Baseball. Oh! Has been doing a partnership with Marvel. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Defenders of the Diamond. I looked at those hats last week. They're so nice. I am working on a video about this relationship. I've mm -hmm. been talking to a number of the minor league teams about how the relationship is going for them and if it's working for them. So I figured I'd get the comic book to use for that video coming up soon, probably in September. I'm still waiting to hear back from a couple of the minor league teams. We're working on this, so this goes with this. I'm going to see if each team has a different logo, if I can catch more did, of them. Did Marvel do this with the NHL years ago? I think they made, they didn't do as much as they're doing with minor league baseball. Okay. So minor league baseball, mm -hmm. they have, they've changed the uniforms on some of the teams. Yeah, they yeah. gave them characters. They did comp because they do giveaways. They have appearances. So mm -hmm. I've been getting into it with some of the minor league teams about yeah. what it entails and how much it costs them. So I really stay like tuned the for that video. The buffalo the, uh, symbol. The bison. The bison. So yeah, it was really cool. A couple, I bought some hats. Yeah. One more thing I uh, picked up. This Brian didn't even see these. I picked up new business cards. <laughs> so I saw the front I thought our one. business cards were a little bit boring. It just had our logo on it. So I turned us into a comic book cover. That looks nothing like me. So there's our comic book cover. <laughs> There's, it's you as a comic book character. Look how sharp they made my jaw. That's exactly what I, I appreciate it. But Exactly what I showed this to my daughter this afternoon. She came today and she was like, look at Brian's jaw. <laughs> but there we go. Collector's Confessions, our new business card. If you see us at a convention, come and say hello. We'll give you one of these. Oh, that's there funny. There you go. 
That is funny. I just wanted, I wanted something different. Our other car just has our logo on front, so I said, you know what, let's make us into a... I like the still only 35 book. cents right. on there, too. That's Let's great. make us into a comic book cover. So nice. we are we have comic book cover business cards. And I was looking at... Them. You're going to have to take some of them with you. The still only 35 cents made me think of the... I was looking up today, the very first comic I ever owned. Was, it, was still uh, only 35 cents? Yeah, it said still only 35 cents on the cover. What it was, was a it? Marvel Tales starring Spider-Man. It was a reprint. It was Marvel Tales 101... But it was a reprint of Amazing Spider-Man 124, which was the first appearance of Man Wolf. There you go, J. Jonah Jameson's Werewolf. And that was Son. that was your first comic, right? Very first comic I ever owned. Yeah. There you go. You can own us as a. Mm -hmm. You know, if, again, if you see us anywhere, ask. We'll give you one of these. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You could have this much more attractive version there of me. There you go, <laughs> Ryan, as a cool comic superhero. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, check us out. We're going. We're working on right now. We're going to be doing a live. Oh each yeah. Each month we're going to be talking discussion. about a discussion. So hope you guys can join us. More information coming up in the next week or so. We're going to pick the movie. We're going to let you guys watch it beforehand, so mm -hmm. you can discuss the movie with us as we do a live. We will let you know when we do our lives on Thursdays. Anything else you want to see? Just you know, message us, email us. We're, mm -hmm. we're open to. We would be honored yeah, a bunch of if you would join us. Well, we collect collect what you love. We'll see you next time.